In this video, we will take a look at how we can provide internet access to a lonely computer using the SSH protocol. So we will be using a feature of SSH called dynamic port forwarding. To get started, we will take a look at the setup that we have. In this setup, we have a couple of machines. The first one is a lonely machine. So I call it lonely because all internet access has been blocked for this machine by a local firewall. The only other machine to which this can talk is a SSH server which is beyond the firewall. Now this SSH server has full access to the internet. What we are going to see in this video is how this lonely machine can use the SSH server as an intermediary and get access to the internet for itself. Now I will quickly take you through the setup for the Lonely Machine. The Lonely Machine runs Ubuntu, so I am going to use UFW or the Ubuntu Firewall to disable outbound internet access. Before doing that, let me check whether UFW is enabled. I can do this by using the UFW status verbose command. So it shows that the UFW is active. Now I'm going to add the rules for denying outbound internet traffic. So now I have denied all outbound connections to HTTP, HTTPS and port 53. This means that this machine effectively cannot access the internet. To verify, I'm going to launch Google Chrome and go to amazon.com so as you can see it is saying there is no internet access so now we will see how we can make the lonely machine to access the internet to do that I'm going to set up a SSH connection between the lonely machine and the SSH server this is a special type of SSH connection and it supports a feature called as dynamic port forwarding. When using dynamic port forwarding, what happens is the client side of the connection becomes a SOX client and the server side becomes a SOX server. So whatever traffic is sent to the SOX client gets relayed over to the SOX server. The SOX server then acts as a proxy for the traffic. So here if uh, let's say uh, if I want to access amazon.com I'm going to send this to the SOX client. SOX client will just relay this information to the SOX server. Now the SOX server will look at it and say, okay, the client wants to visit amazon.com and then it will initiate a connection to amazon.com on the behalf of the client. And whatever response it receives from amazon.com, it is going to relay it back to the SOX client, which in turn will forward it back to the browser. So now let's see this in action. I'm logged into the Lonely Machine and I'm going to set up a SSH connection to use dynamic port forwarding. To do that, type SSH-D. So this indicates that dynamic port forwarding will be used. So after the hyphen D option, I need to specify the local port that needs to be used for the SOX client. So usually port 1080 is used and then I will give the username of the SSH server and the host name. Then I'll give a few additional options that determine the behavior of this tunnel. First one is dash C which is to use compression and dash F is to run it as a separate uh, process from the shell and dash N is not to execute any commands once the session is created. So now the dynamic port forwarding tunnel has been created. Just to verify, let me do ps-ef and grep for SSH server. So as you can see, this process is running. And let me also show you the netstat output, which confirms that local port 1080 is being listened on. Now I'm going to open a new window and start TCP dump. So this will only capture packets that are destined to the SSH server. So similarly, let me also start the TCP dump on the SSH server side. 
now i am going to launch google chrome from the lonely machine in incognito mode and set the proxy server as localhost and port 1080 i know the syntax is a bit involved but then it is easier to do than opening the browser and then changing the proxy settings then i go to amazon.com so as you can see the amazon.com page has come up this means that the dynamic port forwarding tunnel that we set up is now working and we can access internet from the lonely machine itself we'll quickly see the pcaps that uh, we captured so this is the pcap of the conversation between lonely machine and the ssh server the entire conversation is uh, encrypted so there isn't uh, much that we can figure out from this now let's take a look at the packet capture that we did at the SSH server. So let me launch Wireshark. So if you scroll down the PCAP, you can see that there is a DNS query for Amazon.com, and we have also got the response. Let me now put the display filter as uh, HTTP and check. So I'm just randomly uh, pulling one uh, TCP stream and uh, following it. As you can see, there is some communication between the SSH server and Amazon.com. I hope the example was uh, helpful to understand dynamic port forwarding feature of SSH. Thanks for watching.